Hello, everyone. Welcome to the Glory Room. I'm Prophetess Lou. I hope you all are having a blessed day. Before we get started, let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you. Thank you for life, health, and strength. Thank you for loving us and taking care of us. We thank you for the word today. We ask you to help us apply it to our lives, Father God. Help us to figure out what you're trying to say to us today. Father God, we thank you for grace and mercy. We ask you to give us ears to hear and eyes to see. Father God, we ask you to bless the ones that are hearing it. And bless the ones that are reading it in Jesus' name. Amen. So our verse of the day is Romans 5 and 12. Therefore, just as sin entered the world through one man and death through sin. And in this way, death came to all people because all sin. Subject death to all, but saved by one. Christian truths, so I'm going to say it and pause behind each one to give you opportunity to say it if you like. I'm redeemed. I'm saved. I am free. I am delivered. This verse states how one man, Adam, brought sin to us all. When Adam participated in eating the fruit, he broke the commands that God had given him, which was not to eat the fruit. A lot of people like to say it was the woman's fault, but we can't blame it all just on the woman. We must blame it on the both. I have a sister that I'm very close with. We do everything together. I even have gotten in trouble because of her. Likewise, every time this happens, my mom would say, Lou, you can't follow her down this path and she can't follow you. She says, what you do in your life is your responsibility and your choices. She said, you can't blame others for decisions you make are made. And for the longest, I didn't understand. I felt that what I did was because of her convincing me and not my own decisions. But as I got older, I realized that what I did was because of me. I have free will and I don't have to follow her. I must take accountability for my actions. This is just like Adam and Eve. He didn't have to eat the fruit, nor did she, but they both allowed their own decisions to lead them down the wrong road. This verse said, therefore, just as sin entered the world through one man and that made, that man is Adam. Genesis 2, 16. And the Lord God commanded the man, you, you are free to eat from any tree in the garden, 17, but you must not eat from the tree of the garden of good and evil, for when you eat from it, you will certainly die. See, God gave him this command, and then he created Eve, which Adam should have said, no, don't eat this fruit or something. But instead, verse Genesis 3, 6, it says, when the woman saw that the fruit of the tree was good for food and pleasing to the eye and also desire for, for gaining wisdom, she took some and ate it. She also gave some to her husband who was with her, and he, and he ate it. She ate, and he she handed it to Adam. That is how sin entered into the world, which caused death to come into the world. Later, God tells Adam this, Genesis 3, 19, In the sweat of thy face shalt thou eat bread, until thou return into the ground, for out of it was thou taken. For dust thou art, and into dust thou shalt return. See right here, God tells them they shall sweat, and they shall eat the bread of, of the work of the ground. This isn't the plan God had for us. He didn't plan for us to do this. But because of sin, because of free will, because of lack of control, all this happened because of one moment of weakness. Even in this, we must see that when we have moments of sin, we lose fellowship with God. We also It also affects his will for our life. When we sin in this way, yes, we have grace and mercy. Still, when we can avoid sin, we must do it because the more we give into sin, the more doors we open up into our lives for the enemy to use. The other half of this verse says this, and in the way death came to all people because all sin. When we sin, we die a physical death in hell when we die, and a spiritual death because we create a bridge between God and us over sin. We have every opportunity to get it right every day, and we have every opportunity to have self-control. The more and more we deny the flesh, the more we gain self-control. We become more on fire for God. Our body at, at the point of sin will want to do things that are of the flesh. Still, when we give our lives to God, we have the opportunity to make it right. This week, we are talking about anointing. And when we sin, we are weakening the anointing of God. And when we sin, we are picking sin over carrying the anointing. And to carry this, we have to pay the price. And that's saying no to self every day. 1 Corinthians 5, 21 through 22, for us by man came death, and by man has come in also the resurrection of, de of the dead. As in Adam all die, so also in Christ shall all be made alive. Adam brought death, but Christ brought life. Through the first Adam, we have nothing but death. But when Christ came and gave his life and rose the third day, he allowed us to make it right by giving, by believing in him. We must entirely give ourselves to him. And when we give him every part of ourselves, we will start to see a true change. 
We have to believe that we have salvation through Christ. We have to believe that Christ gave this for us. He gave us grace and mercy. And a lot of times we don't grasp this bigger picture because we we are seeing it through a small lens. But God gave his son for us to be saved and to have an opportunity not to die and spend eternity in the lake of fire. Still, we must remember that we can only live forever when we give our life to Christ and not submit to sin. We have to stop submitting to sin to have eternity in heaven in our rightful home. Today, we learned that Christ fixed what Adam, what the first Adam couldn't do, which is providing us with eternal life. Christ died so that we may have everlasting life. But just like Adam, we must learn to take accountability of our shortcomings and realize that Christ wants us to live life through him. We can't just say the words, but we must be willing to separate ourselves from a life of sin. We must be willing to live a holy and righteous life that might be hard to do. But still, it's it's us saying no to our flesh and saying yes to God. To carry the anointing, we must say no to our will and yes to God. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for everything. We ask you to help us stay focused on you and not our flesh. Lord, we ask you to crucify our flesh today so that we can be closer to you. Lord, help us deny ourselves and to choose you. Lord, life has many choices, but we want to take ownership or accountability of our fleshly ways and choose you. We are sorry for anything we have done and give you everything. Please continue to help us to be more like you. Help us to take uh, accountability over our mistakes and hand them to you and help us to make better decisions in Jesus' mighty name. Our reference are Matthew 6 and 24, no one can serve two masters for either they will hate one, love the other, or will devote to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and money, Matthew 6 and 24, Romans 14 and 12. So then each of us will give an account of himself to God, Romans 14 and 12, Proverbs 27 and 17 iron sharpens iron and one man sharpens another proverbs 27 17 our further reading is proverbs 23 acts 14 judges 5 and mark 8 this end death to all but saved by one i pray you all have a blessed day remember jesus loves you i love you too remember to like subscribe and follow on any platform remember to share with a family member or friend if you can please share on your social media Thank you. Be blessed.